to license it. Meep, meep. Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Matchbox Makeovers. I'm Andrew and on the bench today is a 1 to 58 scale Matchbox 1968 Toyota Land Cruiser FJ40. It's a tough 4x4 that I've never driven but would absolutely love to own. I live in Switzerland which is a natural wonderland and this looks like it would take me anywhere up mountains, through the mud, fording rivers. This one's not in terrible condition. It's got a little bit of chip paint here and there, but it's kind of light on the details. I'm going to respray it and jazz it up with some exterior details and a couple of DIY add-ons to make it a real 4x4 action vehicle that any little boy would love to take on an adventure trek in his backyard. Enjoy this makeover. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell for regularly updated content. It's free. And your respectful comments are always welcome. I promise to reply to each and every one of them and be sure to tell me where you're watching from. I'm a world traveler, so I'm interested to know. Several new subscribers have found my channel and told me that they are watching and learning and taking notes on the steps to do a little die cast makeover, same as I did when I was just starting out last spring. So that's why I include all of these little details in my videos. I realize that many of you already know how to drill out a post and use a Dremel tool, but I want you to stay tuned as well for a couple of upcoming build announcements and some new channel features that will be right at the end of this video. I've changed up my drill bit from about a four millimeter where I take out the rivets initially to a two millimeter drill bit size to drill out this post and that's going to prepare it to receive a 256 self-tapping screw. And there's only one on the Land Cruiser. The other end is held in place by a clip at the back that inserts through the base piece. The year 2020 is coming to a rapid conclusion and thank goodness for that what a crazy year this has been but it's the year that I got started in this hobby so I have some fun memories but I'm hoping for great things to come in 2021 including a buddy build with Ricky from iRefix diecast we're gonna do a Honda CRX together and the diecast sheriff is sponsoring a birthday invitational on the Tonka theme and it looks like a lot of people are getting into the action on that one. This Matchbox casting debuted for the 2009 Mainline under the Outdoor Sportsman Series as number MB764. It was produced until 2014. Mine's the earliest model from 2009, available only in yellow with a white roof and smoke windows and it was made in Thailand. A retool of this casting was issued in 2015 for easier assembly. A big chunk of metal comprising the front bumpers and fenders became part of what was just a plastic interior. The base was revised in an updated copyright year of 2015 as MB990. It resumed production until 2017 when the license to Toyota fell through. 
it's unknown if this casting will ever be used again, even though Mattel has renewed the license. So far so good on the Land Cruiser build, with all the standard steps that I usually take, including the rejuvenation of a worn out, scratched up windshield. Looking nice after a dip into the Pledge Revive It. But I want you to watch as I handle crushing setbacks, overcome adversity, and triumph in the... Oh, just wait a minute. That was the Netflix blurb for Rocky IV. Uh, but I do have a, a couple of problems that I'm going to handle here. Paint stripping is not one of them. This slides off like zombie skin. And down to the bare metal work. I often take an X-Acto knife and just pick out from the casting lines and shot lines some residual paint. And whatever I can't get with that, I do away with it with the wire brush attachment on the Dremel tool. The actual Land Cruiser, which was Japan's answer to the Land Rover, was made by Toyota from 1960 until 2001. Most 40 series Land Cruisers were built as two-door models with slightly larger dimensions than the similar Jeep CJ, but it was still available in short as a J40, 41, and 42, or medium length, the J43, 44, and 46, and the long wheelbase versions, the J45 and 47, with both gas and diesel engines. This looks like a blank canvas now, doesn't it? It's a satisfying moment. I like to just turn it over in my hands and look at it before it gets a shot of degreasing and a rub down with the shop rig and into the paint booth. I went out and bought a new mini spray can of a gray color. I'm applying it here and discovering it's just slightly lighter than what I really wanted. It didn't quite match the color on the cap of the rattle can. But nonetheless, I'm going to go ahead and work with that. You see all kinds of different color palettes that are available. And I decided to launch into the DIY styrene manufacturing process and make a cargo rack for the top of the Land Cruiser. I did a few measurements, fashioned a base, put some posts in there using a pin vise. And I found that taking a thinner piece of styrene I could just bend those edges the way that I wanted them, and this is what I came up with. A couple of roof racks to hold it in place, and I'm not going to permanently affix those, so this will be able to be put on and off. And what's this? Is it a Christmas stocking? Is it a Canadian hockey stick? No, it isn't. It's a snorkel for the side of the Land Cruiser. What do you think? <laughs> Just having, having some fun with my hobby. Matte black on all of these uh, accessories so that they will stand out against the gray paint job. When they're this small, I use a fine brush instead of spraying. decided to paint the front fender wells in the matte black finish as well. 
is for a contrast against the gray. And once again, I am using my X-Acto blade, just the tip, and I have discovered that scraping off the paint gives me a much more accurate finish on all of these chrome hinges and buckles and latches than trying to apply paint with a brush. Here I'm using the same technique on the headlights taking away the paint and revealing the bare metal undercoat. Here's when disaster hit. Clear coat time. Not quite to the mowing mass. All the humanity and all the passengers speeding around it. I don't even know what happened, but everything's in a controlled temperature environment. Uh, humidity, not a problem. I can only imagine it was a chemical reaction, but like the mythical phoenix bird, it has risen from the ashes and this time came back in a dark forest green. And I'm using this second run at it to do a couple things I didn't do on the first time. Most importantly, I'm going to paint the roof white. And instead of putting tape all over the body of a freshly painted die cast, I have decided to experiment with this cling wrap. I did the fine taping with the Tamiya model tape, and the less sticky tape that hits the side of the model, the better, so I was pleased with this turnout. And now I'm just going to remove the most important masking line What do you know? Beauty. If any touch-up is required, I can just put a little dab of white or forest green on the end of a paintbrush and give it a touch. But all is good. And I'm back in the saddle and resuming with a little bit of detailing on the undercarriage. We now know Toyota is one of the largest automakers in the world, but after World War II, this scenario would have seemed completely utopic to even the most ardent Toyota fans. Unlike the US or Europe, Japan did not have any traditions in car manufacturing before the Second World War. And furthermore, Japanese products were not very desirable in foreign markets after the war, particularly in the United States. This meant that they had to gain recognition in the most difficult way by producing cars that were better than those of their competitors. And the Land Cruiser played what was perhaps the key role in that mission, certainly for Toyota. It's no secret that in order to catch up with the competition, you have to copy what they make and try to improve it while you're at it. The story of the Land Cruiser was exactly that. The Brits already had their Land Rover, and the Americans had the Willys Jeep, and it was based on the latter that the Japanese built their Land Cruiser, 1950. Incidentally, the SUV was originally referred to by the codes BK and FJ, and the commercial name Land Cruiser only appeared in 1954 no doubt a direct allusion to the Land Rover, seeing it would be hard to come up with a more similar name. Putting some Citadel Nuln oil on the casting lines here, and that simply brings out a little bit of the detail and a weathered look. We're ready to put it back together. Snorkels on. I put a license plate on the back. I've detailed the lights front, back, and side. Windshield looking brand new. Got some tan leather interior. And the bottom, dressed up. Just enough. Now 
we already know everything fits well because it's been pre-drilled and the screws were tested. But I want to make sure all the parts are set in, in correctly. And a little click is always a good sound to mean all is well. Let's have a closer look. I like the chrome latches and door handles and hinges against the forest green, don't you? It's original wheels. Tail lights, reverse lights done up. Just a bit of a highlight on the bottom. Side mirrors were done black and I guess the biggest change from the original is the snorkel and the cargo rack. I'm going to put a tire in there. And from the creative mind of one at Matchbox Resurrection, saw him do this and he put a cargo net on top of a, I don't know, it was a Land Rover Defender or something. It's an onion bag. <laughs> Thank you, one. It looked better on yours than it does on mine. Here it is again in its original state at the beginning of the project. And here's my made-over Toyota Land Cruiser FJ40 in forest green with a cargo rack and a snorkel and some fine exterior details. Hey, this is my new little diorama. It's super small. <laughs> but it's going to be fine for the glamour shots. And this is another new move on my channel. I give my cars away as gifts when I'm all finished, and I used to put them in a little gift bag, but now I've ordered some blister packs, I've made up a template for the background, each one will have a custom insert in it, and it looks like this. Kind of makes it look pro, doesn't it? And all of them are free gifts. They go to the Goodwill shop when I'm all finished. I really don't collect cars or display them. The fun of the hobby is giving them away. And just so you know, I actually do that. I'll show you. Uh, these are collected, wrapped, and a guaranteed second life with a little boy or girl. Thank you again for visiting my channel today. Give this video a thumbs up, won't you? And come back real soon. It's coffee time.